listeners, my name is Ma Schneidu and I am your host of the Raising Kaelin podcast. This podcast is geared towards special needs parenting and also discussions on current relevant topics of interest in our community of Dyersburg, Tennessee and uh, in the world at large. What a crazy way to start off the new year. Uh, The episode, episode 39, that you're about to hear was actually recorded with Jennifer Mee Ross of St. Louis Children's Hospital in uh, November, early November of last year. Um, However, as we all know, life happens. And at the beginning of this year, um, our family was personally touched with COVID-19, We hope to bring you a discussion soon with experts in this field. So sit back, relax and get that cup of hot coffee or hot chocolate to enjoy this discussion with uh, Jennifer. Jennifer Morose is a pediatric physical therapist at St. Louis Children's Hospital and supervisor at the Carol and Paul Hatfield CP program in St. Louis, Missouri. She directs two phenomenal programs, Camp Independence, as well as Try My Best Triathlon. Jennifer, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I'm just really curious, Jennifer, you have such a diverse um, background growing up. You lived in multiple cities. What puts you on the trajectory of becoming a physical therapist? Actually, so my mom was a physical therapy assistant in Cleveland. She just recently retired. Uh, so when I was growing up, I knew I liked working with, with people, and I taught swim lessons and babysat and things like that. So she had a colleague of hers that had gone to St. Louis University for physical therapy school. So I uh, figured that that I would go go that route and have really uh, enjoyed it very much. Uh, I, I definitely am glad that I'm in pediatrics. Um, that's where I uh, know that I was meant to be. Um, and I really like sports uh, too, but I knew that I didn't, I didn't necessarily want to go the athletic training route or um, really competitive competitive sports. I, I really like getting just people involved and, and enjoying sports. So doing adaptive sports has been amazing for me uh, because it just, it, it gets everybody involved. And that's, that's what I really have, have wanted uh, to do. And so I, I've been really lucky to be here in St. Louis where we have um, funding and a great program and, and lots of great people around me to, to help make, make these adaptive sports programs what they are. Jennifer, tell me a little bit about Camp Independence and, and what that is about. So Camp Independence is an adaptive sports day camp that started way back in 2003 and it it's at a community rec center, but it it really for for the physical therapists out there, it really is an intensive physical therapy treatment disguised as a sport an adaptive sports program. So we're really working on endurance, balance, strengthening, coordination through sports and and doing it in a in a day camp so the kids are there from nine to four and it's they can come um from one week up until three to four weeks and we run it for six weeks in the summer at the webster groves recreation complex and it it's been really a a a great adventure um and of just watching watching and helping kids grow up and being able to to play sports and to figure out which sports they really like. So I kind of call that camp independence is kind of like the minor leagues that we are just introducing sports to kids with, with cerebral palsy that some of them never thought that they could play sports. They always thought that they'd have to be on the sidelines kind of cheering and watching their siblings or friends. 
And this is a way to have them see what sports they like to play and then how, how can they excel at that too? And how can we make it adaptive that they're able to successfully play? And then we have some, some participants then that have gone on to do competitive like Paralympic style sports. Um, that they may have never thought was was possible. So that makes it really, really exciting. And each each day is a is a fun, fun day. Now that adaptive sports is becoming more mainstream, what resources, like if parents weren't living in St. Louis, what resources are possibly out there, Jennifer, that they could learn more about adaptive sports? There, that's where we're really lucky that there are lots of resources out there now. Uh, it, it's definitely becoming more more in the the mainstream for sure. Uh, that I mean, I've done Google searches of just adaptive whatever sport you want to play, and then you know you can find find things that of how to adapt that sport. A lot of times, um, adaptive physical education teachers are a good resource that they um, can help help kids in the school setting along with their physical therapist. Uh, and a lot of, of different uh, recreational groups now are, are doing different things of, of getting, of making it adaptive of different activities for, for kids with disabilities. All of us are aware of the benefits of exercise, period, no matter what your background is. Just so that we hear it from from you as a physical therapist, why do you think or why would you encourage parents to, to have the mindset that your child with cerebral palsy needs activity? Activity is, is so important. And it, you know, when I was first starting the camp independence program, I thought it was all about physical activity. And, and it is an, a very important piece to two kids growing up. The other piece that comes into that is just raising their self esteem, too. And that when you're active, you feel better about yourself and you're, you're able to interact with people in your community and you, you meet people that you may have never have met before. And, and I think that's part of when you're, you have a child with a disability of, it's of getting to that point of acceptance too. And of you, you, know, you may have had this dream of, of your child playing a sport and you think because they have a disability that they're not going to be able to do that. But then of getting to the point of, well, they, they can do that. It may just look different. The type of sport they're playing or how they play, it, it, it's going to probably look different. And, and just I think the benefits to the parents of just having that hope again and of having dreams. And they, they may just be different dreams of, of how, how you're doing it. And, and I think with any kids, you know, you have a dream of them playing a certain sport or playing a musical instrument or whatever, and they may completely spin it on you of wanting to do something that you would have never have thought that they, you know, that you know how to do or want to do. And then it's of, of meeting the different people with, within whatever that activity is, is really important. But physical activity is is greatly important, and I think especially now when we're in the middle of a pandemic of just getting out and, and walking or riding your bike or finding someone who has a pool that you can use or, or something like that is is really important. The Try My Best Triathlon is such a awesome resource, and like you guys, it, you you have one in St. Louis, but there's also one through uh, Vanderbilt H- Hospital here in Nashville. Mm-hmm. Tell, tell us a little bit about the Try My Best Adaptive Triathlon, Jennifer. Yes, so the triathlon is started, it, it started back in 2014, uh, and really, it, it came out of the Camp Independence Program, so I'm glad we were able to talk about that first, because what we saw was that kids were coming to the Camp Independence Program, and they were being really active. So I actually had some therapists who were doing, who did a study of, and it was before activity monitoring was as popular as it is now, but they they had kids wear activity monitors two weeks prior to camp, then during the camp time, and then at least two weeks after. And they found that 
they, you know, during the camp time, we had some kids that could could do the 10,000 steps a day, and then it went down. So really then at the same time, the uh, American Physical Therapy Association's uh, pediatric meeting was in St. Louis. And there was a group there from Augusta, Georgia, that were, were presenting on the tri their Try My Best that they did in Augusta, Georgia. And they were teaching, you know, they wanted it to spread and to, to have other people hear about it. And really the timing couldn't have been more perfect for us because also I had um, a Washington University student contact me who was president of the triathlon club and he wanted their club to become, you know, to be able to volunteer more. And so, you know, at the time we had the camp independence program, we had classes during the school year, uh, but nothing, nothing like a triathlon. So then I saw that this presentation was happening in St. Louis and this student actually went to the, the presentation with me. And from there, from the, the two hours of that presentation, we, it, it, that's when the Try My Best St. Louis was launched. Like we knew that we had everything in place to be able to do it. We just needed to, to then get the organizational pieces in place. And the great thing about it was that he had the Washington University facilities, so we are able to do it on their undergraduate campus, which has, you know, a, a beautiful rec center with a swimming pool. And then they have, you know, a sidewalk area to be able to do the cycling and the running, walking in their wheelchair, what, you know, the last portion. So it really was all kind of serendipitous of how it all came together um, in 2014 to, to have this adaptive triathlon and, and really to give kids a reason to continue being active after the Camp Independence Program was over. So once June and July happened, then in August to still have something to train for. And then our hope was, and still is, that then once you do one triathlon, that then you want to train for that next one a year ahead, you know, a year from now. And to keep that training, which is what athletes do. And a lot of kids just, they want to be like their favorite athlete and, and do training. I think you hit on such an important point there because it's all about mindset, isn't it? You, you, you need it is. To you need to think um, think of your child with cerebral palsy training as an athlete. And this is not for recognition of excellence as such. It's actually something for more important. It is for the ability to function or to carry out your just your daily activities uh, because it does take that kind of dedication and mindset. Mindset, I, I think that's a really important thing of that's that's what gets us up in the morning, gets us out the door, you know, of of, of just being having an active mindset of that we're gonna, you know, that you're gonna go out and maybe walk or ride your bike and it may not look like what you thought it really, you know, should look like, but, but that's okay, that it's okay to, to be active in the way that you're able to be active. Jennifer, I just want to quickly tell you about this, this young man. His name is Todd Williams. He's actually a physical therapist with cerebral palsy, and he ran the uh, New York Marathon um, that was such a awesome podcast interview because um, he actually runs a blog called PT with CP and okay. if you have a chance, take a look at it because he explains it so well as to, to why it is important having, having that mindset. So um, it's Todd Williams. It's PT with CP with and CP. actually the, the podcast we did was episode uh, 23 of the Raising Killen podcast. Okay. And, um, um, my favorite thing that he always says is be curious about movement. Don't get into habits. Be curious about the way your body moves. And I mean, that goes across the board for oh, any yeah. one of us. Yeah, for any one of us. 
Jennifer, thank you so much for telling us about Try My Best uh, as well as Camp Independence. I know parents really out there really um, are, are looking for this kind of information. And I would encourage them to look at Try My Best Adaptive Triathlon because it just doesn't happen in St. Louis. They're actually, uh, it happens on a national um, level as well. So see if there is a triathlon close to you. And uh, Achilles Kids is also another virtual program that, that parents can check out. I know Jennifer and them did a virtual program recently as well because we weren't able to get to St. Louis this summer. Um, Jennifer, is there any way parents could, could look at your, is your Facebook page for the uh, triathlon still up? It should be still up, yes. And then there's still on the St. Louis Children's Hospital website, they have a triathlon, an adaptive triathlon page also. Uh, and I can get that, the, the exact link for you. But if they, if they search for try my best, so T-R-I, then M-Y-B-E-S-T, um, on, on the St. Louis Children's Hospital website, there's videos uh, from from past from this past year of of the pictures that people have sent in from what of how they that we how they adapted the adaptive triathlon. So it really was it was great to see that that a lot of families were able, you know, to to get their kids out there to either you know do one of the parts of a triathlon or all three of them. Uh, it was a beautiful day, so we are lucky to to have that. And and a lot of families, I think it it pushed them to to do things maybe that they wouldn't have done. Which which again, it goes back to that mindset of just of of getting out and being active. We had one family tell me that they had only ridden their child had only ridden his adaptive cycle in a parking lot. And for this, uh, for the for the try my best Sunday they decided to go on a trail and to try a trail and he did it. And he, he, you know, so those are the things of, of just, you know, these little pushes and nudges to, to get us to do a little bit more and to be active. And again, of, I think it just, it, it helps our self-esteem so much of just of overall how you're feeling. And then, you know, for parents that have children, you know, that are, are pretty involved and have a lot of care needs, it also helps just with uh, figuring out how best to transfer kids and to work on transfers, how best to get them into their standard of, of doing standing, of seeing, can, I, I believe that all children are able to ride some sort of adaptive cycle, that there is an adaptive cycle out there for every child. And, you know, and, and of trying to find that and, and working with therapists to, to figure out, you know, what's the best cycle. And then swimming is, you know, is a, water is a great equalizer. So of being, of, of just trying to get kids, you know, in the water of, even if it's just playing in the water, it, it's something that brings, brings joy to people. And I think that's, that's a really important piece of being active is, is too of just what what it does to us mentally and of bringing joy to to each person and and to again going back to that dream thing of of people you know just having different dreams and aspirations for their kids and it may look a little bit different but of of just doing it and then each day it hopefully getting a little bit better Jennifer, thank you so much. I think those are pearls of wisdom, and I, I really enjoyed talking with you today. And I, I know our parents will enjoy this podcast as well. Guys, please go ahead and uh, listen. And uh, if you are on Apple or Spotify, we would appreciate a rate and review. And again, Jennifer, thank you so much. You're welcome. Guys, thank you for listening to episode 39. And uh, if you would like to reach out to us, you can contact us at raisingkellen at gmail.com. And Jennifer has kindly uh, did a write-up for us. And you can find that uh, on our website, which is raisingkellen.org. Well, guys, until next time... Um, get to the top of your mountain 
and this is Ma Schneidu signing off. <laughs> <laughs>